Hello and welcome to Languagecraft for episode 17 of Let's Time Lapse. We're starting to near the end of the series, and the town is really starting to look like it's done. Here is the harbor that was built with Bed Porsche, a Languagecraft builder, like all my guests. Now the harbor is such a mess. It looks great and as time goes by, that messiness becomes more and more ingrained in the town's style. It's fairly medieval, and seems apt to me. But today we're looking at something very different, which has to be also straight and solid, since it will be the sign of the Lord's strength, and has to be able to shield the inhabitants in case of an attack. Something that will be a rival to the church in terms of scale. Let me warn you right now, this episode will be particularly full of history facts and tidbits. Laps and Oriendo both gave me detailed presentations on medieval castles, especially Oriendo, who gave me a whopping 11-page document. So I hope you will forgive me if I'm a little all over the place, I have to go back and forth to stick with what you're seeing on the screen. So, starting during the 9th and 10th centuries was a process called castralization in French. There is no English equivalent, but it designates the appearance of castles in the countryside that organize a country into regions. Rather than small countryside villages being on their own, they started being governed by local castles. Even more so during the 11th century, when forests started being cut down. We'll quickly go over that, but not before episode 19, the second part on the castle. For the moment, we're starting with the dungeon itself, the center of the castle. We built it on a semi-hill, because for the moment we haven't worked on the banks of the river yet, which will play an important part in defending the castle. So this hill is the defensive advantage that justifies the castle's placement. In the future, this hill will become the inner bailey. One important thing to remember is that there were two possibilities for the appearance of a castle. The first one was for a castle to be built first, which will attract a population around it, and the second one is the opposite. There were often agricultural villas that sometimes existed since antiquity, and that would be turned into a castle. In our case, I would go for the former. We can imagine that the castle was built here because the hill was strategically interesting, and it was placed between two large harbors so that ships would want to stop there for supplies. From this hill was built a small castle, followed by a town around it. As for stone castles that were really meant for defense, sort of like the one we're making now, they started appearing around the 12th century, which makes sense as our series takes place during the 13th or 14th century. But of course, if we had wanted to do it exactly right, we wouldn't have done it in this order. This would have come towards the beginning, but we wouldn't have been able to have a theme per episode. However, it is at the very end of the series that it will be finished and take on its more massive form. So what use is this important lord? Well, first off, he's in charge of high justice, judging important cases and giving out the death sentence. That was reserved to the more important lords in the country. The lesser justice dealt with smaller offenses, like modern-day misdemeanors. However, in our village, the commandery is very powerful, and I think the Lord shares this second power with it. The Lord also collects taxes, but he does have some duties. He has to protect the population on his lands. If there is an attack, they are allowed to come and seek refuge within the castle walls, which is one of the uses of the lower bailey. In exchange, the Lord can ask for the aid of the local knights, which is the origin of the conscription in the army. But at the time, it was limited to 40 days, to constitute a militia. It was used to actively protect the region, or to patrol. That, of course, is purely military, and was the Lord's prerogative. In his document, Oriendo said, to use his exact words, that he didn't want to traumatize me by saying that a castle was never the way we used to draw them as kids. 
you know, with a tower on each side with a wall between them and a portcullis in the center. There were maybe a few here and there, but largely they were not so clean. This is way too early for Vauban style architecture. That's why you can see that the shape of the castle follows no clear pattern. The dungeon rises up from the center, and in the second episode on the castle, it will be raised up even more. Around, we've built walls and towers, including this wall that runs along the side of the dungeon, but there is no direct access between the wall and the dungeon, otherwise the attackers would just have to scale it and they'd have direct access to the heart of the castle. Around that, each tower is unique. We didn't want to copy and paste them, it didn't feel medieval. However, one thing that is true is that there was always a tower in each corner. Well, except that our castle isn't exactly square or rectangular. Here you can see Bed building a diagonal wall. Speaking of which, you might have noticed that there are quite a few people helping me today. There's usually only one. For this episode, I wanted to bring in all the builders that helped me in the previous episodes. Or will help me before the end of the season. Unfortunately, Mikomega has stopped playing Minecraft, so he didn't join us even though he still says hello once in a while. Uh, you will meet Dudelash in the next episode, Mimilala and Tophil uh, you met uh, for the church and the monastery, as well as Dezd, who will join me for the very last episode. And finally, Bed, who helped me in the previous episode on the harbor. I love the idea of getting everyone together, even though there are many more builders within Languagecraft I would have liked to invite if the seasons had had more episodes. As for the structure, here we're starting to separate the two baileys, the inner and the outer, which are separated by a wall and will be on different levels. But they also have very different functions. Originally, castles were built around the dungeon and a tiny bailey surrounded by towers and curtains of stone that simply joined up between the towers. Those towers often only had two stories, which is mostly what we did, even though we really focused on the outside. The inside will follow, I've just started putting in the uh, levels now. Originally, towers were square, but they later became round to resist cannonballs. We mixed and matched, mostly square, but you may have noticed a big round tower. We'll be building another one in the second episode, and are planning on doing something special with it. You'll see. We really wanted to make something special with this castle. It's too big to fit into one episode, so how could we cut it up into two naturally? Since this town is based on history and roleplay, we decided to go for a chronology. Rather than build only a portion, then another one, we're building the whole thing, and in the next episode, we'll tear down the obsolete portions, simulating the castle's evolution over time, including this fence, this wooden wall that surrounds the outer bailey. So for the moment, the inner bailey in the back is the only real bailey, but people who are not in the Lord's inner circle have to stick to the outer bailey. We also built the bridge going from the town center to the castle, and had quite a hard time. It ended up being diagonal, and uses the same kind of pattern as the first bridge in the village, to keep the same universe. We did, however, add an arch, and used only wood, not gravel. I thought I would try out a few camera effects like this one, to change things around and to give everyone a little respite between frantic building. My French audience liked it, what do you think? We destroyed all the layouts when we had to build in their place, but we did keep a copy because we will need them for the end product, the second episode. The riverbank will also need to be pushed back to be at the very foot of the walls, which should offer more protection. No assailant will be able to land. Now you can see the dungeon in the corner of the frame. It's a special tower, of course because it's the biggest one, but also because it was usually in its own bailey, separated by another line of defense, even though here we wanted it to be part of the inner bailey. During the 12th century, it started being a place of learning rather than living, but I prefer the latter, especially since, in case of an attack, that is the last place the Lord's family will be able to seek shelter. If even the dungeon falls, there was often a secret passageway that came out several miles away. That might be really fun to make, actually. 
As for the dungeon's shape, we were originally going to go for round, to contrast with the town's fort, but rectangular goes better with the style we went for. And there we go! As always, we start from the other end of town, in front of the harbor, which is still missing a few buildings. You can see in the distance that, for the moment, the castle is much smaller than the church. I'm not sure that's a problem, as the church was always trying to go higher to get closer to God, and in any case, the church is very powerful in this town. Regardless, keep in mind that this is only the first episode of the castle. It will get much better and much bigger. Among other things, the roof of the dungeon is flat for the moment, but the final version will be sloped. From the town square, this is the route you would take to seek audience with the Lord. You would have to enter the courtyard through this gate. In the outer bailey, there are several buildings that I'll say more about in the next episode, when we build the final version. We have stables, in which there would be about 15 horses in a castle this size, there might also be cows, and we have a pen for chickens and pigs. We also left a lot of piles of stone and wood to simulate building materials, as this castle is a work in progress. And finally, we have an outdoor forge, a small building with a large chimney which is the kitchen, and a green tent for soldiers. Now the wooden structure you can see latched onto the walls is a hoarding. It was used by archers to shoot from lower than the catwalk, keeping in mind that it was usually built on walls that were much higher. We put it on anyway because we really liked the idea. For the moment, the inner bailey is still on a slope, but we plan to make it flat in the end, and there are many buildings still missing, such as the chapel, the cistern, which is very important and we'll talk about in the next episode of the castle, as well as lodging for the guards. Ah, I can't wait to finish the castle and put all of that in. But as it stands, it could be a finished product. When Oriendo came by after we were done building, he said it could have existed in this form. Now please let me know in the comments section what you think, what ideas you might have for the next part to make it even better. For the moment, nothing is written in stone. The castle might be a tad small, but don't forget that it is only a small town, no more. On the map, you can see that it is nested in the river bend, which will help defend it once we're done with it. So there you have it, episode 17 of Let's Time Naps, thanks to everyone who participated, as well as all of you who watched. See you soon for episode 18. Bye-bye.